Hi, I'm Ed Bacon, the rector of All Saints Church Pasadena. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, I hope that you'll find something here that speaks to you. Welcome. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be aligned with your love, O God, our strength, our courage, and our freedom. Amen. This morning's gospel story tells of Jesus carrying such peace inside him that he was able to bring peace to all that surrounded him, even the winds and the waves. Another way to understand the story is that Jesus has within himself the spirit and power of God, that same spirit and power that created the creation in the first place. So that when Jesus' fearful boating companions wake him up, for he was asleep in the boat, when they woke him up, Jesus is able to communicate with the, <clears throat> with the very creation that was made by the same spirit that he incarnated. That hurricane hit their boat, that hurricane that had the same creator as Jesus, and Jesus rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea as if he were speaking to his siblings. He told the hurricane to calm down and the sea to be still. I think he probably had more luck with his siblings than you did. <laughs> Calm down, be still. They obeyed him. It's a great story. Now, at All Saints Church, we don't expect you to leave your mind at the door. So you've got to work out for yourself how much truth and how much fact you think this story contains. God gave each of you and me a mind which we are to use for both enchantment and transformation as well as for critical thinking. But as but as for me, but but for me the story is jam-packed with truth. It's a little thin on the kind of documentable fact you can video and post on YouTube. But because it is so full of truth, I take the story of Jesus as calming the storm as a story for my life. Now, when I was composing this sermon, it just so happened that I heard Krista Tippett interview Dr. Richie Davidson of the Neurology Department of the University of Wisconsin in Madison on her radio program on being. Now, the story I'm about to tell you is full of both fact and truth. Um, I really did hear this national public radio program last Sunday on my drive home from church when I was beginning to think about this morning's sermon, a sermon about living through storms with peace at your core. I learned that Dr. Davidson is our nation's pioneer in studying the brains of Buddhist monks who were referred to in his studies as Olympic meditators, people who have spent at least 10,000 hours in contemplative practice. After the Dalai Lama personally asked Dr. Davidson to study the impact of, on the human brain of Olympic meditators exercising and meditating on compassion, Dr. Davidson did so and thus became the pioneer in this field now called affective neuroscience. His work has greatly impacted the nature-nurture debate. We are not simply the products of our environment, nurture, nor on the other hand are we simply and solely the product of our genes, nature, but human beings actually can change their brains through exercises in both awareness meditation 
and compassion meditation. As I understand it, awareness meditation is coming to stillness enough that you can observe all the thoughts and feelings going through your mind and body so that you know that you have these thoughts and feelings, but you are not these thoughts and feelings. We are something much deeper than our thoughts and feelings, which I'll get to in a moment. Compassion, compassion meditation is when in stillness you are caring and exercising kindness toward yourself, and then you also send out that caring and kindness energy, compassion, to your friends, as well as to your enemies, as well as to those who are ill and in any form of trouble. And then you send out that compassion energy to the four corners of the earth. Olympic meditators, Dr. Davidson's studies, have been doing these exercises for tens of thousands of hours in their lives. Now, although Dr. Davidson made his discoveries by studying the brains of meditating Buddhist monks, now he is testing these meditations on children and teenagers and adults who have autism and ADHD. Getting them to practice this nurturing kindness and self-reflection. And he and others with him are shifting the whole psychological paradigm that focuses on trying to fix what's wrong with us and look at what can be right about us. His research is even challenging any simplistic notion that you and I are hardwired for fear or other attitudes and behaviors that would obstruct our highest possible functioning in life. Instead, this area of psychology and scientific research in neuroscience is showing us that brains have what they call plasticity, that all of us really can change our brains. We can rewire ourselves for peace and justice, compassion, inclusion, and joy. It's all about which influences we're going to choose for our brain. Uh, this reminds me of an old parable taken from the Cherokee tribe. An elder Native American was teaching his grandchildren about life. And he said to them, I have to tell you, my grandchildren, that a fight is going on inside of me. It is a terrible fight. And it is between two wolves. Two wolves, grandfather? What wolves? He said, one wolf represents fear, anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, negativity, and ego. And the other wolf stands for joy, peace, love, hope, sharing, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, friendship, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandchildren thought about this for a moment. And then one child out asked his grandfather, Grandfather, which wolf is winning? And the old Cherokee grandfather simply replied, The wolf I feed. The affective neuroscientist from Medicine, Wisconsin, Dr. Davidson, says that most people don't think of qualities like peace and happiness as being a skill you can learn and develop, 
Rather, we typically conceptualize ourselves as having fixed traits, fixed personalities, and some people have more of peace and happiness and some people have less of it. But if you think about them as a skill you can learn and then practice, it's something that can be enhanced through training. It's fundamentally like um, a kind of, uh, a, 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 it is fundamentally like physical exercise. It's mental exercise like physical exercise. Some people um, think that they can just do two weeks of physical exercise and then expect the benefits to remain for the rest of their lives. And the same principle applies to mental exercise. In other words, my friends, in, in having your mind changed, being given a new mind, metanoia, that Greek word is often translated as repentance, which is, I think, not such a good translation in the New Testament, but better translated as transformation or having a different mind. Having the kind of mind that Jesus brought back from the dead and gave to you and me his witnesses, giving it to us every time we pray, every time we're in community, every time we are in service, every time we stand for peace and justice, every time we participate in the sacraments, that mind is to be exercised like you exercise your body every day. And when exercised daily, your mind becomes the mind of Christ. Or as St. Paul writes, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. We are speaking of nothing less than what Paul and Jesus and Thomas Merton and Meister Eckhart and St. Teresa and Richard Rohr and all the spiritual greats spoke of. Union with God, the divine core and light within you needs to be exercised to change. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, let me tell you why you're here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this thing. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, do you think I'm going to hide you under a bushel basket? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you up there on a hilltop on a light stand, shine a piff. <laughs> Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you will prompt other people to open up to God, this generous creator in heaven. Now, let me please sound a warning about how all of us can distort, this is one of the many ways which human beings can distort spirituality and religion. This is not about attaining equanimity 100% before you take on the storms in your life. Storms do not wait until you are equanimous and calm before they come to you. Daniel Berrigan writes, some people today argue that equanimity achieved through inner spiritual work is a necessary condition for sustaining one's ethical and political commitments. But to the prophets of the Bible, this would have been a foreign language and a foreign view of the human being 
the notion that one has to achieve peace of mind before stretching out one's hand to one's neighbor is a distortion of our human experience and ultimately a dodge of our responsibility in the world. Life is a roller coaster. He could have said life is a storm and one had better buckle one's belt and take the trip. This focus on equanimity is actually a narrow-minded, selfish approach to reality dressed up within the language of spirituality if you use equanimity as an excuse not to get involved and not to risk your life. My experience is that there are times when we just can't collect ourselves into calmness before standing in solidarity with someone who has been bullied or someone who has been excluded because of their skin color or gender or sexual orientation or whether or not they're documented or not or whether or not they are a nun and the Vatican is bullying them. We are called to stand up then and there and help dismantle systems of discrimination. So there are two additional ways to access this calm inside in addition to becoming an Olympic meditator. One, you have to rely on community. Even if it isn't around you, we are bringing into our membership today those who have come through the spring membership class. I have met with them and many of my staff colleagues have met with them and it's all been about inviting them into this vibrant community. Community is not magical. But what it means is that we people are willing to be human beings together in the midst of our storms. And it means that we are willing to pay the price for being human. It means that we are hearing the call of I'm standing up for justice and peace and inclusion and compassion because that's what we do as members of All Saints Church. And even if All Saints is not physically right here, I know that my community has my back. And the second thing is that you always have to rely on the fact that God is inside you. In the Rector's Forum today, we had a young woman who just graduated from UCLA she was born in Peru and her parents brought her here at age six. And because she is an undocumented immigrant, she has not been able to have a driver's license, have a job, except in the underground economy, accept scholarships or work study programs. And so she would have to rise, ride a series of buses two hours from her home to UCLA, one way, every day, to get to school. And she said sometimes she felt so alone that the only person she had on her side was God inside of her. My favorite poem of the moment was written by a public school teacher in Spain who died in 1939, Antonio Machado. He wrote, last night while I was sleeping, I dreamed, blessed epiphany, that a spring was breaking out in my heart. And I said, along which secret aqueduct of oh, water are you coming to me? Water of a new life that I have never drunk. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt, blessed epiphany, that I had a beehive here inside my heart, 
and the golden bees were making from my old bitternesses white beeswax and sweet honey. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt, blessed epiphany, that a fiery sun was giving light inside my heart. It was fiery because I felt warmth as from a hearth, and sun because it gave light, and it brought tears to my eyes. Last night, as I slept, I dreamt, blessed epiphany, that it was God I had here inside my heart. This morning you may be asleep, not only in the boat, but in your life. Wake up. Wake up to Jesus in your boat. Wake up to God in your heart. There is a fountain flowing inside you with new water. There is a beehive inside you transforming your old bitternesses. There is a sun inside you helping you to weep tears of healing. It is God inside you equipping you to face and calm any storm. Amen.